important voice on the show today, and that's uh, from the southern cement space. The stay on the Tamil Nadu sand mining ban and some improvement in the pricing power could put south-based cement companies back on the growth track. Add to that the demand generated by the government-initiated infra projects. The outlook is promising. Uh, does it seem like that to some of the leaders which operate in that space? India Cements has about a 65% exposure to the southern markets. Um, and, and, and you know, leverage this catalyst, can they do that to turn around the financials which uh, haven't quite lived up to the promise? Let's find out, out that from Mr. Rakesh Singh. He's president at India Cements, joins us right now on the phone line. Mr. Singh, thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking with us. Um, Almost everybody, Mr. Singh, uh, seems to believe that there is a possibility of a strong demand growth, ranging from 8 to 10 percent, which would arguably be the strongest in the last six to seven years, coming in an FY19 for the southern cement space. Uh, are these realistic assumptions, you think? Uh, very much, because if you look at it, last five years, practically, uh, South either had no demand, uh, no demand growth or a negative demand growth. But if you look at this year too, when we started the quarter, we had a minus 7% in South. And uh, even a state like AP Telangana, which were new states, were deep growing. But if you look at the last quarter, quarter four, we had a growth of 15%. Every sequential quarter, we have grown uh, quarter two, 1%, quarter three, 6%, and 15% in quarter four, leading to a 4% growth for the year. What is uh, impressive is a huge growth coming out of Telangana and uh, Andhra Pradesh. The last quarter growth was as high as 37%, which is unbelievable. But um, And for the year as a whole, 17%. Of course, what was dampening was uh, lack of demand from Tamil Nadu. Uh, you know the reasons, primarily driven by lack of water initially and subsequently uh, the sand mining issues. Uh, I guess both of them are behind us. So we saw a decent growth of 4% in the, uh, in the last quarter. Uh, but it's early days, but I believe that uh, even Tamil Nadu will come back on track. Uh, so if that be the case, 10% uh, growth, uh, or maybe more, is, uh, is something which we can look forward for the year uh, coming year. So what's, what's the bigger trigger? I mean, uh, is it Andhra Pradesh and Telangana on the back of infra and low-cost housing projects? Or do you believe the low base in Tamil Nadu aid to that, the fact that monsoon could be normal and the partial resolution of the sand mining ban has happened, therefore that supersedes the demand from AP and Telangana. I know both are important, but which is the bigger trigger? See, one, one big uh, uh, trigger was, of course, the AP Telangana uh, initiative, the government's initiative in doing irrigation projects. I mean, one has to see this coalition projects of Telangana to believe what they're doing. It is practically they are turning the river back. So if uh, the amount of concrete which is going in is unbelievable, so that is one area where uh, you know, the demand is coming from. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the capital of Andhra is yet to take shape, but imagine if that comes and what the demand will be. Uh, but low-cost housing, uh, the irrigation projects, the road projects, which is slowly taking shape, uh, especially in the neighboring state like Maharashtra. Karnataka is another state where uh, lo uh, rewards, low-cost housing, pre-election demand, all that has added up uh, to it. As you rightly said, the Tamil Nadu Kerala is still a dampener. We are still looking at uh, some triggers from there, the lack of governance, the lack of uh, uh, water, lack of sand. It's all adding up to not a very great demand there. But I believe all, all of that is behind us. We have a stable government there. We have uh, sand mining issue resolved. So we should see on a low base a better growth the coming, month, coming months and the quarters. Uh, but... What we have to look forward is the, you know, the multiple effect of all these projects which are happening. So I believe that the uh, housing project, housing, individual houses also will start coming up and you know, we'll see much more demand coming from south. So we are quite bullish as far as demand uh, side is concerned. Would this entail your, your utilization levels uh, moving up northwards of 60-65% as well? Because that's something that people are pricing in from the current numbers that you may be at. I mean, brokerages, yeah. when I look at them or read them, they may, or Nikki, my analyst, was telling me that the expectation yeah. is that you will probably not 60-65% even in this scenario. It might be difficult to go beyond that. What will your thoughts be? Uh, if you look at quarter four, if that is an indicator, the industry operated at 68%. Uh, and whereas, you know, uh, for the year as a whole, we were very close to 60%. So that 55% has moved to 60% slowly but steadily. Uh, having said that, now look at where the demand is coming from. Demand is coming primarily from Andhra Telangana. So what you will see, actually you will not see one composite south. You will see south of south and north of south. 
and you will see the north of south company especially people who are in the telangana uh, plants and the andhra plants will start doing much better in terms of capacity utilization as compared to the plants which are uh, located in tamil nadu fortunately for india cement we are we have our biggest four plants in uh, in andhra telangana okay no so you would you, you mentioned the 60% for quarter 4 that was for the industry for for india cements individually do you reckon that 60 65% or northwards of that utilization levels uh, uh, might become in a... fact in quarter 4 we did 70% oh wow okay okay so if all of these factors turn out to be true mr singh and 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 the demand buoyancy is as is uh yes. you would reckon that you could actually hit 75% odd as well blue sky scenario in fy19 sometime you never know you never know you can't write it off i think if the 10% 12% growth comes and given that see one more thing which you have to factor in when you look at south is a huge movement which takes place from south into west and south into east fortunately maharashtra is growing at a very brisk pace too i mean it is growing at 11% uh, so uh so you can see that you know the material moving out of uh, south into maharashtra will only go up so i won't rule out the industry average of 70% and india cement being 75% uh, in the coming year okay uh, i have two last uh, questions or maybe one um, you know everybody believes that for india cements individually as well maybe for the industry too that profitability will not be a factor of the pricing but will be a factor largely of volumes and then of course i mean operating leverage come into play because your capacity utilization levels move up maybe improved revenue mix for companies such as yours again correct assumptions or do you believe pricing which has shown a marginal uptick in the month gone by could actually head higher too i personally believe in a commodity pricing is the most important thing the volume uh, of course will come as the demand comes in but you know the pricing uh, power which is right now not with the manufacturers is very very important uh, for you know companies to make profit so i think and and uh, we are on the right track is what i believe because is our the busy season the demand is good uh, this is the time when prices normally mm-hmm. move up we have seen some uh, marginal improvement in april i think the trend is positive so the companies uh, in southern hemisphere will definitely make uh, better profits as is it, go by is it possible to predict fy19 mr singh pricing average pricing fy19 higher than what was average pricing fy18 for sure uh 100% it better be because the costs are also going up so i think the pricing has to be much much better because costs are substantially up uh, uh, in term in the, in the back of pet coke and coal prices going up so we better have a better price uh, for companies to make a decent profit if that were not to happen would there could there be a squeeze on margins Uh, of course the price looking as at, i told you the price no is, i mean I, i'm just asking because of the cost pressures i mean are you seeing cross pressures looking so severe that unless prices move up there could be a squeeze on margins not just for you for the industry i mean so no, no we are talking about the industry as a whole but if you look at it what has uh, what has come in is cost of pet coke has moved up and moved up for pet coke or coal whatever everybody uses it's mostly pet coke and imported coal what we use and it is again depend upon the crude and the ocean freight and things like that Uh, if if that is that is definitely moving up so we uh, you know from a lows of 70 dollars it is now to 110 and 120 dollars uh, a ton so given this uh, uh, cost pressures are definitely there but i believe that the, uh, given the demand scenario given the equations in the market the pricing will be far better than what we saw in uh, fy18 so uh, we should be able to make up more than um, uh, what we are going to lose on the cost front